Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics that relates to the R. Kelly case in both the federal appeal in Brooklyn and the Chicago trial. I want to begin this podcast today by saying to the channel, please feel free to subscribe, to comment, and to like comments in the chat and get to know each other you know, throughout this process, because it's going to be a process, okay? So we might as well just know a little bit more about each other and get a feeling of who's in involved in the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel. I'm really on today, before we begin our true discussion of what we're going to talk about today, I must share a fraudulent action that's going on around Facebook and Cash App. This is very important to my subscribers. I need you to understand what's happening, what's going on. So I was sharing my information within the groups as I always do when I, you know, want people to know that I have another video coming up. And I was asked a question, just a simple basic, do you have a Cash App tag name? And I said, yes, but you know, um, she said, I would like to have it because they have a blessing for me. So be very careful about blessings from people you don't know. So I said, okay, my cash app name is whatever it is. You know, everyone here knows what it is. But anyway, they told me they were going to send me a gift of $5,000. That was very weird, very strange. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe 50 at the most, maybe 500, but 5,000, I've never gotten that in a gift from a stranger, first time stranger. So unless of course we're in a nonprofit world where we're gonna, you know, use this for our community center or something like that. But this cash app had my name on it, on the email, and I almost got scammed, almost got scammed <laughs> until I noticed that there was a semicolon. If I hadn't have paid attention to that, it wouldn't have made me go back to the email and look up the Cash App email. So when Cash App sends me something, it's specific to a reference number. And then I have my op two factor authentication on my phone. So when it comes, I know that I've initiated it or it has initiated a conversation for me. So they told me that they were going to bless me with this $5,000 gift, have my name on the cash app email. And then I noticed the semicolon in the $5,000. So it was five comma thousand dollars with the semicolon or a colon set with 89 and I knew it was bogus at that point because that semicolon was the very thing that made me go back and look and say wait this isn't real you know I was told to send an email clearance fee of $76 to the email send it to them I said wait a minute now you're gonna bless me but I gotta pay you to give me the blessing. I said, how about this? How about you go ahead and put the 5,000 into the Cash App account, and then I will in turn, as always, have Cash App deduct the fee from what I get. So it will be 400 and, or 4,000 uh, 4, and maybe $91 or something like that, or 80 something dollars. So then they kept going back and forth. So I want you to hear the conversation and how it all went down to the blesser of the Cash App blessing that was supposed to be received on August the 15th. That was a very trying day. So this lady named Ebony Stanfield from Facebook, she is a Gaywin Gainwell Technologies. She went to Ben Davis University High School. I viewed her profile and it looked pretty, you know, authentic. Like she has a little boy on the 
the front of the page and all that. It's, it's, it's really nice. So it goes Monday about 6.39 a.m. Hello, how are you doing? I say, greetings, I'm good, thank you. She says, and I asked, how are you? She said, I'm doing okay. She said, do you use Cash App? I said, yes, I do. She said, send me your Cash App tag. I sent it. And I said, why are you doing this? I said, would you like to be on the show or something? Do you like, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be like $20, $5, $10, whatever. And then she, she, she screenshots me and says, is this your cash app? I said, yes, it's me. And then she says, and, and then I tell her, I said, a percentage will automatically be sent to Robert Sylvester Kelly as always to let you know. She said, congratulations, your payment has been paid and it's pending like you see and will be completed and available in your cash app balance immediately. You make the auto deposit. I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, great. I'll just transfer the money like I always do. And I knew I have money in the cash app, so there was no reason for me to send money when cash app automatically deducts. So I said, oh my, I said, thank you. She said, you're welcome. She said, I'm grateful for what you do on the channel. I said, I will get better equipment for the broadcast. That's what I'll do. She said, that, that's great. It sounds very good. I love that. And I said, may I send a shout out to you on the show? She said, special thanks. She said, I guess you got it. It's all yours once you receive it. It's yours. You ain't sending nothing back. I said, you are like a big sponsor and well appreciated. God bless you. I guess you got it. Did you get it, ma'am? I said, let me check. I didn't get an email from Cash App with the sound drop that I have on my Cash App soundboard. So I didn't even know that the email was sitting there waiting for me in my email account. So I go check Gmail and Gmail has an email for me. And it's with Cash App and the symbol and logo of Cash App. And I said, oh, well, maybe this is real. But then me, I'm very, very um, pessimistic when it comes to things like that because it just doesn't make any sense. Unless, of course, it's being done. It would have immediately happened on Cash App and it would have dropped immediately if it was real. So I knew it wasn't. So I said, okay. I see it says pending. It didn't say pending on my cash app. It said pending on the email that did not have the correct cash app um, account on it. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you the cash app email that it said it came from. So I said, um, and something just told me to say this to her. Well, it says I can take, it can take up to four to five days because I Googled it and that's what Google did say. I'd never gotten a, a gift this big from a stranger. So nobody was in my phone to go automatically into the account. So she said, show me a screenshot of this. I show it regarding payment on hold, cash app service, cash app payment to me. For five thousand dollars okay and so i said you should have a copy of it yourself right well i will let you know when it clears that's basically what i'm saying because right now you're wasting my time i'll let you know when it clears so then i get she says she got an email too i said great so we'll probably take a few days she said i guess you got this too i said yeah it was the same exact thing with the clearance fee of 76 dollars that I didn't understand what it was. I said, yeah, you have to complete on your end. It doesn't transfer until that has been done. She, she said, how much is the clearance charges there? I said, $76. I said, would you need me to pay that, of course, before you send it? <laughs> and I started laughing. She said, put the $76 on your cash app, ma'am. I said, I have money in my cash app. It should have automatically deducted it if it was connected to my official cash app account. She said, not until the transaction is on my cash app is pending. I said, oh, you have to clear the payment on your cash app. She said, no, you have to clear it 
on your cash app. I said, I got money in it. Nothing is pending anywhere except for Gmail. Let's give it a few days to see what appears. Gotta go. God bless. She later says, it, it won't pop up until you clear your payment, ma'am. I can put you through how to clear it. I said, take it out the 5000 I'm not clearing anything unless it comes from Cash App, my original app that connects my account to my banking account. So thank you. It's the thought that counted. I've always paid from the transfer money and it deducts itself. I'm on my way out. Be blessed as you are blessing. She said, I can't be taken out of the, it, it can't be taken out of the money. All you have to do is clear your payment. I swear to God. That right there is another sign. Why would you have to swear to God? For what? <laughs> You're giving me money. <laughs> So I say, let me contact Cash App and I will get back to you later on, okay? Their customer service will verify this email is correct. And then from that point, if they say it's official, then I'll send you your sixty, your $76. She said, message them from the Gmail account I sent you. Seriously, you think I'm Joe Donut? You, you really? She said, that would be better, the Cash App service. <laughs> I said, oh no, I'm messaging, I'm messaging them from my app that I know is legit. Like, really? She says, okay. And then I said, they responded within an hour. She said, that's cool too. Okay, let you know. They open at nine. Hit on your cash app and show me a screenshot. Like, really? You're going to, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I said, no, I will go no further until I've talked to them. I will get back to you. Good day, ma'am as she calls me. And then I had, and then I sent her a message after, you know, Cash App opened. I said, hi, Cash App. Just told me that they will be paying the clearance fee for me. So the payment will be sent within three business days, okay? They need an accurate email address that belongs to you. Please send that email to me. Here's her response. I'm a God-fearing woman and the Bible says that I shall not hurt one another rather than to make each other happy. Reason why I'm doing this, that's am blessed with more than enough. All I care for is other people's happiness. I said, yes, I understand. So I just need your email so Cash App can send the payment in order to get the funds to you to put on hold. Well, of course, you know, I'm baiting her right now. I'm baiting her in because... I'm going to take the email address that she has given me for Cash App to make sure that they block her ass from any other fraudulent activity such as this. So she says, try to clear your payment and that's all. Let God strike me dead. I don't play with any money, especially nowadays, seeing how hard it is to even get a dollar. What about 75 of those dollars? I would have gave you a dollar if you had asked. If you asked a hundred people for a dollar, that's a hundred dollars in one, whatever, one click. Come on. I said, I have to do it with your email address. Please send it. She said, hit on your cash app and show me a screenshot. I said, I just need your email address, cash app. Cash app will do the rest. Ebony2013 at gmail.com. It's probably not even her right email, but... I just want to show you how the system and how desperate people are today to do the dirty conniving things in the name of giving, in the name of love. And this is manipulation. This is narcissism. This is corruption. This is control. And, and these are the people in which R. Kelly was around. People like that want to come with a smiling face with a with a knife behind their back ready for you to turn around so they can just stab you in it to weaken you because I'm minding my business doing my thing I'm not asking anybody for anything not even a, a donation so my point of the matter is leave me the hell alone and don't play no mind games with me because I'm way smarter than that I was born slow on your fastest day. So please don't embarrass yourself. And for Ebony, 
The only thing I have to say to you, sweetheart, is you could have got a whole lot more. Had you, you, you would have been able to get more than, than $76 if you had it just came at me correctly. It's amazing how the universe shows you at certain times. And I told you guys how the universe shows days of weaknesses and days where the planet spins backwards, retrograde comes and it's so much easier to get away with certain things on certain days. Because, you know, when you have Aries and when you have Mars and when you have the different planets moving in alignment at a certain rotation, you can try to get over on things, but it's just to show the lesson had the person grown from that point. Can they see beyond just the trees in the forest, but the actual forest? You know, so this is not my first rodeo here on YouTube. I've been on YouTube since 2006. Talking to Facebook, talking to Instagram, talking to, you know, um, well, when Instagram showed up, when all these other platforms showed up, I mean, there are some of them I can't even remember that I was on. So please leave me the hell alone. Please don't do that again. And I'm putting that out there to anybody. I don't ask for anything. So if you're going to at least give, give with a conscious understanding that I already know the games. I already know what's on the street. And I'm not even talking about YouTube streets because that's not even, that's not even fathomable in my mind. I'm talking about the game on the streets, the physical streets of where everyone comes from with all their hoopla and yaya trying to do the most to get something else. So you're taking the game from the street and bringing it to YouTube. That's all you're doing. And anyone who knew the game from New York, knew the game from Chi-Town, knew the game from, you know, uh, um, some of the 10 worst uh, uh, places in the world to be, the last person you need to play is the one who, was been, who has been part of that same street. Game recognized game, so get it right. Don't just think I'm this educated person on here because I get straight hood when I got to because that's where I come from. You can take the girl out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out the girl. But I try to upgrade myself. I try to continue to make myself a responsible um, person on the platform. This is my, this is my stage. YouTube is my stage. It is my platform for my channel and for my individuals who believe in what I speak. So I would suggest that anyone who thinks, I mean, even it, if you go back and look at some of my videos when I first started out, even on this channel, Spectrum Mobile played me the same way. Oh, you're going to get this beautiful iPhone hundred dollars. Oh, let me get that iPhone. I need that iPhone. Then come to find out that I'm in a contract for $1,200. I'm like, no, I'm taking this back. You go take it back. And then now you got all type of scratches and things that no longer makes the phone work. And in their um, laboratory, they found and they did research and analyze that I brought the phone back scratched up only to have taken pictures with it on, off, side, top, bottom, recorded with it on, put everything back in the box and sent it FedEx. So they got caught in their lies too and I refused to pay and guess what happened? I did not have to pay. These are the games. They probably swapped that out for a used one. And when it sold that, I, that iPhone on the street to one of their friends. So what my purpose of telling you the story behind this is because number one, everything is frozen right now. They're in court during the trial. There's really nothing to report on either side, but I just want to just empower you because no matter what I talk about, what I speak, 
There is a message of hope and empowerment that I give to people when they are going through what I'm going through. And I just want to let it be known to be very careful of blessings. And Cash App, when I called them and I made the report, Cash App was like, you're smart. I'm so glad you didn't fall for that. We would never send anything and tell you you would have to pay anything. So please don't fall for the okie doke. I said, I won't. I won't. So I just want to leave that with you. I want to leave with you the fact that now is a very trying time for everyone trying to get over on other people because the games in which they used to play are unavailable. They're no longer able to play those games. So now they need another click. They need another clickbait. Especially my, my subscribers who are older, please be mindful and very careful. Do not sign any contracts with anyone until they've done, well, you know, you sign a contract, but do not share money until they've, they've done what they're supposed to do. And don't hold money on you. Go get a cash app card. Go get a bank card because you can call the bank the minute that you realize that your items have been stolen. Pending transactions only last for 24 hours. So if you can find out and remember that your items have been misplaced or whatever, like your wallet, your purse, you can always call and they'll retract that in, that money back to your account and the FDIC insurance will pick it up. So I'm just telling you that the best way to do things is through credit cards right now, because then you have people you got to be very mindful of and you got to get slick and smart with how people run their games when they're online. Even all the way down to the legitimate websites that you get items from because you can pay for an item and it's not even it's a duplicated website. So make sure your website is completely where you're going. Go to the official website. You know, it's so sad that this is how the world has come to an end. And this is what, you know, we are seeing a new heaven and a new earth. And this is how the physical part of it ends and the spiritual part of it comes with wisdom and understanding. Just like within the court system, same exact thing. The court system doesn't even know what to do with all this, you know, here and there and everywhere manipulation and all this. We don't know who's telling the truth, who's fake, who's real, who's lying, who's not, who did, who didn't. It's a world of confusion. And if we don't have a heart to understand, we are going to get lost in the sauce. And my goal is to make sure that we do not get lost in the sauce because it's not a good thing to be struggling. Use your creative instinct. Use your ability to create business. Use your ability to do more with doing right than doing more with doing, doing wrong. And that's the outcome of what this, this topic is. I will be on tomorrow. I'm going to be making a, a premiere for the uh, jury deliberation and what's going to happen when the jurors start to listen to what the rules of Lennon Weber is going to be um, for the Chicago trial. There's nothing really moved in motions on the appeal. So the second court is still doing what they are doing for the, um, for the appeal for federal Brooklyn. So federal Chicago is just in the, in limbo right now of seeing what's going on. And plus there are people who are actually in the courtroom, supposedly, hopefully this information is truly real. I'm not in the courtroom. I'm not in Chicago. I can't say that anyone has reported anything personally to me. So the only thing I can say is until something is on the docket, will it be official here at R. Kelly Appeal TV? Okay. So, um, I thank you so much for being a part of this channel. I thank you so very much for empowering yourself to just learn more about the law. For my students who are listening, um, all of these wisdom jewels are being gifted to you as well for the sake of you making sure that you are okay. 
that you are okay with the way that the world is going because education is one thing, but to have that street savvy and that street knowledge along with the wisdom of education, you are more empowered and more in tune to be able to be more educated to help yourself. So you won't have these horrific situations coming about left and right, people manipulating you, men taking your vehicles and going to do things that they shouldn't do because you are in love. No, forget love. Love is something that is earned. Love is something that is earned and you have to go through some things in order to really, really understand what love is all about. Okay, but that's a whole nother topic. I'm just ranting on because I'm just super excited. I can do my premieres now and not worry about a script, not worry about what's being asked in the in the chat. It's just, this is how I used to do it in 2006. And I like it. I really and truly like it. Um, I want to also put out here one more thing. Okay, I want to look at the deliberation between jury and jurors. So the jurors are part of the jury. And they make up the whole presentation of what's happening from prosecution side and what's happening to defense side. And then the judge is giving them rules and guidelines of how to follow and read the law. So they're kind of like in a criminal justice class. They're learning something. The only thing is it's not going to be a six or eight or 12 week class. It's going to be a maybe one week, two week, maybe at the most four week class. And then they have to live with themselves on the deliberation. The thing that they communicate with each other and make a final decision as a team. So one of the do's and don'ts of the deliberation portion do work out differences between yourself and other jurors through complete and fair discussions of the evidence and of the judge's instruction. So say for instance, if one person don't like the other person's hair color, that juror may not like what this person is saying because of the fact that she doesn't like the hair color. So then she's going to rebut what she says because of the fact that she doesn't like the hair color. So she'll do the opposite of what this woman is doing, whether she believes it in her heart or not, because that's the hearts of men. That's the hearts of men. So to work out the differences between the jurors and even the way that the jury feels about one part of the scenario with Robert, if they feel a certain way and then they're pissed off that somebody else doesn't feel a certain way, Instead of them being open-minded and saying, well, okay, maybe this can work, maybe it can't, or give me the reasons why it can't work. A lot of people are going to be very, very um, pessimistic. They're not going to believe a lot of things. So in order to get that person to believe in what they're saying or feel a, a certain way so everybody can get to a deliberation, they're going to have to look at the evidence of the judge's instructions. They're going to have to be fair and their ego is going to have to be put to the side. So a man who refuses to listen to a woman because he doesn't, he's a narcissist and doesn't want to listen to women. He's going to have to have a more open mind than the narcissist in which he is on a daily day to day basis. Who's going to put their narcissistic behaviors down in order to listen to a woman that they've never listened to and don't like listening to. So it's going to be very difficult to get them to understand each other, to be complete and fair. <laughs> and then not to lose your temper or bully or refuse to listen to the opinions of the other jurors. So what if they do? What if they choose to bully? What if this juror chooses to bully the other juror and refuse because of ego? But this is what they're saying. You can't do or you can't cannot do. Don't mark or write on exhibits or otherwise change or injure them. So say, for instance, if you have some on your mind because you've seen one of the exhibits is passed around. You're not allowed to take notes and you're not allowed to write on the exhibits. So how are you going to really remember? Because I know me, I have to write things down. 
I use a notebook on my phone to write things down. I use notebook um, to write down notes. Number three, don't try to guess what might happen if the case you have heard is appealed. Well, why would they? Why would they even care about that? I mean, I'm not sure. I'm just thinking because they're in the midst of the storm with the defense right there and the prosecution. They're not thinking about appealing. Appellate courts deal only with legal questions. They will not change your verdict if you decide the facts based on proper evidence and instruction. So basically they're saying as long as you do your part as a juror, then when it goes to the appeal process, the appellate court will not decide how you ran, came across your verdict as a as a unanimous uh, focus, as everybody put together and said that this person is guilty or not. And then he says, don't draw straws, flip coins, or otherwise arrive at your verdict by chance, or the decision will be illegal. It is also improper for a jury to determine damage awards or by averaging the amounts calculated by each individual juror. And number five, don't talk to anyone about your deliberations or about the verdict until the judge discharges the jury. After discharge, you may discuss the verdict with the deliberations with anyone, including the media, the lawyers, or other family, but don't feel obligated to do so as no juror can be forced to talk without a court order. So these are what is going to happen. These are the rules that Lewin Weber is setting down. I don't know if it's Lennon Weber, Lewin Weber, Ryan Weber. I don't know, but I'm just going to call him Judge L, okay? Because I'm too all over the place with the way the pronunciation of that name is. But anyway, these are the official rules during deliberation all over the United States, according to the American Bar Association, relative to the jury um, and the jury instructions and the do's and don'ts during trial. And I'm going to go over a handbook that they also have because um, we have to be very clear in understanding. And the only way you're going to understand how a jury works is to experience the rules and the guidelines of the booklet, the handbook that is officiated with being a juror. And I had to do this through college. And one thing that I recognized is even going through my own trial, this information will definitely help you if ever you or someone in which you love is involved in a criminal justice situation. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, I hope this information has been helpful. I hope that you find some form of comfort in the fact that, you know, these laws that we're finding out Many of us have never been involved with the law. So except for through some form of chaotic, you know, you remember something crazy happening. Well, there's other sides to the law, like as far as, you know, protection and, you know, all of that. So I want you to realize that this is something that can benefit you as well, because it would have been a civil action between me and Ebony if I gave her my $76 and she ended up walking away and say that was a real live um, email or a real live um, Facebook page that wasn't hacked or me and Ebony would have been at it because you come in the name of helping you come in the name of, of doing the right thing with an agenda, a falsified agenda. And see, me and Ebony would have went at it. And then to the spirit gives me discernment. And I was able to realize that I've, I've never gotten along with any Ebony's that have been a part of my life. Never. And it's really crazy. Since that's the case, my spiritual instinct it kicked in and it made me say, this ain't right. Just like those jurors are gonna or should be able to say, this is not right. But then you have so many people who are worried about losing their own freedom until 
They're going to ignore a lot of the inspirational signs. They're going to ignore a lot of the emotional processes that they wouldn't otherwise ignore if they were told not to do this or not to do that. I feel that, and even when I was in college, I felt this very strongly. If a person is a juror, they should be able to express to themselves, to their uh, other jurors, why they choose to feel the way that they do. And sway them over to their side if it is the case. But then you do have people who are purposely, um, what is that word? Oppositional. They're just doing it to be the center of attention or the center of attraction. That's not what the juror is supposed to do. And the jurors together create the jury. So the jury has to make the decision for Robert. They are really and truly the voice of Robert. So many of them who are sitting there is going to be observing Robert as well when they make their decision. And I looked at his picture, even though he may have had a suit on, even though he may have had a tie, even though for his court, he looked like a human being. In his mind, his esteem is so low. All he did in the, in the sketch was hold his head down. There's a lot to that. There's a lot of meaning to that. Body language is everything. And if you feel as though this has beaten you down to the point where you have nothing, that is the time to go within and find your higher strength because this could be really, really, really making him feel so downtrodden and so distraught that he may literally not be able to even emotionally handle any of this after, even if he's found not guilty again, he may be so mentally or emotionally traumatized until he's not going to be the same person that we knew him to be before. He's not going to be that person. And I paid attention to the body language. And this is the reason why I think that the federal court refuses to allow cameras because they want us to see him in the mindset that the media wants to portray him. Maybe they just took that one picture, that one sketch when he was putting his head down to pray or something. And that's how they amalgamized the whole situation that, oh, he's depressed. Oh, Joy's not having his baby. All of his joy is taken away the day before his trial. But I say to you, Robert, hold on. Have faith. Know that this show passed just as well as the federal Brooklyn's passed and is being reviewed right now. So I'm going to go over that handbook for juries. And that's going to be what we're going to be focusing on because I think that is extremely important. And you do not want to miss what the handbook has to say through the uh, Bar Association because that is extreme. We're going to break it down. This is how they taught me in criminal justice where I had to pay $100,000 for this education in order to receive, you know, the ability to be able to talk about this right now. Okay. So my goal here is to enlighten and empower those who are going through the process and the journey that R. Kelly is handling right now within himself, letting him know that he's not alone, letting him know that he has people who support, protect, and honor the wellness and just the rightness of justice. I know a lot of people were, I got a few emails yesterday on the podcast relative to me talking about <laughs> the prosecution. And yeah, I got it and I understand it, but I need you to understand that the criminal justice system does not swing one way. It swings two. And I learned this from my own case. And that was the hardest thing for me to learn during the time that I'm being tried among my peers that have never met me. 
but because they have a good criminal record, because they have a driver's license, because they are voters and they have the freedoms of what society says is matters. They judge me because they were able to handle a life with all the stress, with all the strife, with all the losses and didn't behave the way I did. So then I became that individual that everyone looked at as a person who couldn't control their emotion. I just saw my attorney, John B. Uhas. This man, I seen him downtown. I was driving, I had to stop on the busiest intersection. And I was just like, John, it's me. I'm out, I'm here, I'm free. He knew it, but I hadn't seen him in so long. That man helped save me of 34 years. 30 plus the four, I 30 was what they expected me to do, supposedly in the indictment. But by the time it was all said and done, with all the blood, sweat, and tears, he's my attorney, Jennifer Bonjean. John, I love you and thank you so much for everything you did for me. You know, but I know it was God as well more than anything. So Robert, I tell you, um, I'm here to let you know that sometimes things that look so horrific and so at the end that it nothing you can't see the light for nothing you better keep your faith you better keep on shining everybody says oh it's so cool to have a last name shine yes it is but know this on the days you don't feel like shining you better shine you better shine because there's a lot of things that is involved in the respect of that name, just like Kelly. Kelly is a strong name. Kelly is a powerful name. It's a name that brings people together and you better Kelly. <laughs> you better Kelly. <laughs> so Kelly Nation, I'm just here to just give you some empowerment, some inspiration, let you to, 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 to just leave you with, don't fall for the okie doke. And when something don't feel right, before you even began to it. Yeah, that would have been great. That would have been great for me to get that 5G. But here's the thing, I'm already victorious. I've already got that. That's already in the bank spiritually for me waiting. So when I get it, I'm gonna be like, that's that day that lady was gonna give me that 5,000, but something happened and somehow or another, either I thought she was playing a game or she was playing a game or whatever, whatever her, ways of doing what she do was to me it was fraudulent because you said cash app and it wasn't cash app so i just want to put this out here <laughs> i know um i'm probably gonna be laughing at some of the comments that my 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 subscribers have and <laughs> i'm telling you mila <laughs> timothy Galatians, Carla, I mean, all the beautiful, Ray Johnson, April. <laughs> I just hear y'all right now saying what y'all would say on the live, but I'm also here, Blue Bunny Gamer. I miss you guys, but I'm on this side and I'll see you at six. I'll see you at six on the premiere. And for those who are coming on new, just coming in, drop your name in the chat so I can get to know who you are. Because when I talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, Frankie and Johnny, you know I can't forget y'all golden doodles. <laughs> when I get ready to talk to you guys, you'll know who I'm speaking about. And it don't matter if you know, it matters that I know. So everyone that I make connection to, to comment with here on R. Kelly Appeal TV, you will be recognized. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful day. So let me know if the jury information helped you. Um, let me know if that is something that you continually wants to hear when we're dealing with what's going on in the courtroom behind closed doors while not being part of the observational 
um, group of individuals who are in that arena with R. Kelly as at the moment. Daddy Lolo on um, celebrating R. Kelly has a lot of good, you know, comments, I guess, from the Chicago um, um, trial within the jury in the courtroom. So you might want to go over there to see if he has anything that you might want to be interested in. Um, he keeps everybody up posted with uh, information from specific things relative to um, how R. Kelly is looking in the courtroom, I guess, how he's dressing, how many jurors were selected, um, little things like um, how he... Uh, how Bonjean is doing and tweets like that. So go over and check him out. Um, he has a lot of things that he's saying on there. Whereas, um, yeah, over here we're doing the, just the basic legal stuff of the trial and what's going on with the jury and how the juries are being selected. I don't know the names of the jurors, which that's not even going to be known in the motions because everybody is so worried that there's going to be a fear of retaliation for, you know, uh, compensation behind doing it the right way. They're doing it a lot stronger than they did it in 2008. And that's one of the reasons why we're going through so many stipulations and rules and guidelines for this trial. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm going to title this The Cash App Fraudulent Scammer. <laughs> slash information about jurors slash thank you for being here thank you for liking commenting sharing and subscribing to this podcast slash as always keep it 100 slash and we'll see you next time peace and blessings